Hi everybody and welcome to Will Alexander's Dog Show Tips, brought to you by ProPlan, Nutrition That Performs, and Canine Chronicle TV. Tonight we're starting a very special series we, we call Preserving the Past. And the special guest today is Patty Keenan, discussing her mother Barbara. I'm sure you're going to enjoy this one. Hi everybody, today we are here with Patty Keenan, and this is the first in a series called Preserving the Past, and we're going to talk about Patty's legendary mom, Barbara. Hi Patty, how are you? I'm good, Will, how are you? I'm excellent, it's great to see you, you look fabulous. Well, thank you, not so bad yourself. <laughs> so, we're going to get right into it. Can you tell me how your mom got involved in the sport of dogs? Certainly. She, uh, actually, they had a family pet, Scotty, that... Uh, tragically got run over by a car. Uh, they went to get a Westie. They wound up, my mom had, I don't really know how she knew about dog shows, but she did. And they got a little Westie bitch in 1947, I believe, named Edgar Stone Cindy. And that was her first show dog. And she how actually finished her. Two what? How old was your mom then? 12. Oh, okay. Sorry to interrupt. I just wanted to. Oh, no, that's fine. She was 12. Uh, she actually finished that bitches championship. I actually have the championship certificate from 1949, which was the very first champion for my mother. Wow, that's amazing. And grandmothers. And I went from there then? When, when went did from you... there, she continued. She, um, they imported a lot of dogs over the years from England, not just Westies, Wires, Carries, some, some Lakelands. She, she did. Had, who did my mother you? and my grandmother. Oh, okay. So she was, uh, still, she was still young there at that point. She was very young. She, um, her, God, let's see. Um, yeah, so she started when she was 12. She showed, learned to show dogs by showing in junior showmanship. Um, had great people that supported her along the way at that point. And I couldn't even tell you who half of the names are, nor would probably anybody but maybe a very small handful of people even know who they were now. Um, so yeah, they imported a lot of dogs through the years and had great success that way, so. So did the name Wishing Well start when she, when she was young like that? Yes, it started, it was, it came from, they had a small farm in Kennebunk where we had a summer home, they had a home in town that had a wishing well on it. That's where it came from. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Yep. Did she, so we, we talked about the first show she attended. But what, do you know what, do you remember what, what did, do, you, do you remember? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't remember. Do you um, know what show, the first show she attended? If my memory serves me correctly, which it may or may not, it was, I believe, South Shore Kennel Club in Massachusetts which ironically is where she judged her very first best in show as a judge wow to which she awarded a now very very famous person and famous dog their first best in show it was michael canaliza's first best in show and blue shaw grandeur first best in show so it was we kind of, i actually have the picture in my kitchen because it's such a cool story oh sure that was wow. in the 19s 78 maybe so oh, i was eight years old i don't really remember it but <laughs> that's an amazing story though wow what about mentors for your mother did you ever mention who were the top like i'm sure um, she meant many but so many uh len pearson in england was a big one he helped her find simon um and some of the other dogs import they imported um Jean Abbey was a Westie breeder in England that I know was pretty influential on my parents later on in um, breeding dogs. I don't know about from the start. Uh, in this country, B and Jack Marvin um, were very influential. Uh, there was an old, or 
she was old when I knew her. Polly Walters was a Westie lady in uh, the Bucks County area of Pennsylvania who we spent many, many, she used to travel with us to any Westie specialty and she was 150 years old then, so. <laughs> um, let's see. That's because we were young. She was probably like 50. But we like, oh, yeah. She's so old. Um, uh, handler wise, uh, she was married. My sister's father was Henry Sayers, who was a handler at the time. Um, Cliff Hallmark was very influential. George Ward, George's father, Ted, um, also very influential. And actually, um, Mrs. Clark as well. She, my mom often went to Canada in the summertime, as a lot of people did for, you know, cars, a few weeks of shows. And uh, Mrs. Clark let her take Wilbur White Swan to show up there, and she won a best in show with him in Canada. So that was always something she, the people who don't know who that is, it was a very famous toy poodle. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I wonder who gave her best in show. Uh, yeah, that I don't know. <laughs> oh, come on, Maddie. <laughs> don't know. So in 1962, Alpha Rook Simon went best in show at Westminster. And there was a newspaper article stating that George, George Ward, had not wanted, to, he didn't want to attend New York that year. And so what changed? What happened? <laughs> I love You're this giggling. story. I do know this one well. Um, back in the day, well, it seems more now, um, it was virtually impossible to fly from the West Coast to New York with any amount of dogs. And Rick Shashudian was driving and he stopped as he would in on those kind of drives in Constantine where George lived and George was like I'm not going my mother said fine send the dog with Rick I'll show him myself I she showed the dog occasionally herself anyway so and Rick said no that's get in the truck just get in you're going and um the most ironic part of it so obviously it came ended with a very lovely evening <laughs> A very nice ribbon. Um, and Rick had gone second. Rick wound up going second in the terrier group to George that night with a wire. So he always kind of regretted his decision of <laughs> forcing George to get in the truck. George. Yeah. <laughs> George wasn't a fan of the garden. He didn't go very often. George didn't go a lot of places if he wasn't fairly certain he was going to have a good result. <laughs> He was kind of a local guy. Even when you went into his area, you had to go in there with a bunch of dogs or else he questioned why you were there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Even me, being in Canada, he was like, what are you doing? Uh -huh. <laughs> so when did the Beagles show up? Mom had Beagles in the 50s and 60s. She actually won a variety at the garden with a very beautiful Beagle bitch um, that I just have seen in pictures, obviously. Unfortunately, epilepsy was a major problem in the breed at that point, and she kind of veered away from them, and she was obviously having very good success with her terriers, so when I was old enough for junior showmanship, all I wanted was a beagle. Um, I was, uh, I had to beg and plead for a few years, but fortunately got one, and Truthfully, it wound up being a great thing because once she was getting older and my mother getting older and unable to do all the trimming and coat work that a terrier takes, she really kind of took over the beagles. Um, I mean, she always was a very competitive individual. We always had her puppy and my puppy from litters and, you know, it was a contest to see which one wound up better or um, you actually wound up with, I think, one of hers. <laughs> I think the first one. <laughs> Um, so they, probably about 1983, they came back into the Wishing Well household and then pretty much took over from there. There really was very few. There was a few Westies after that, but not many. Do you have any favorites that you talked about? Beagles? Any beagle. And any 13-inch red and white beagle bitch or if you could find the magical unicorn of a 13 inch dog <laughs> that would have been that was always her kind of dream and 
We had a few, but she had a dog that she actually went winter's dog with at the national herself. Probably the ni early nineties, I would guess that she really liked. He just, he only showed for her. He looked at me like, and she couldn't get around well enough to do him justice at that point on a higher level. Um, Scott Summers showed him for a little bit, but again, he just, he only loved his mommy. <laughs> Your mother is remembered to be one of the one of the greatest breeders of her era, even to this day. Um, who, who helped shape her her breeding philosophy? Um, so many people, and I couldn't honestly probably tell you a single one. It wasn't something she really talked about. She just she was such a. I don't know if you asked her and I'm a little bit the same way. It's you just do it and hope for the best results. And <laughs> um, I don't know that there's an individual. I can say a lot of individuals for myself as far as her. I honestly don't know. That was so long ago when she started. I, and I think in that era, um, it was just a different mindset and there was large kennels and not that we ever had a huge amount of dogs, but at least not, well, probably in the sixties and fifties and sixties, she probably did have quite a few dogs. Yeah, even think, like then average kennels had more litter. Than they yeah. Had. Well, I think she probably had about 30 dogs in my lifetime. We never had that many. Um, when I was really young, we probably had two. We had a Westie house dog, a Shih Tzu, um, and an occasional one that they were showing. But I've always joked I don't um, bad about getting attached to dogs very much because as, as a kid, a puppy would come, and if it wasn't a best in show winner, it wasn't state. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so <laughs> it was like I was named every Westie puppy Snowball or Snowflake. And I can tell you, I don't think any of them ever stayed. <laughs> I know some people that wound up with them, but um, so a, a huge amount of people, I, you know, all of your. Well, probably the mentors you already you spoke about probably had a, had right, a, a lot of them had a hand in it for sure. Mm -hmm. So Montgomery was well, what I understand was her favorite show. And it was just canceled. And unfortunately, Morris and Essex were just canceled. Do you remember any stories of either of those shows that she would tell you? Oh, yeah. Exciting uh, days or, uh, or yeah. not on exciting days or showing in the mud? <laughs> or <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, there's plenty of weather. Um, Montgomery, obviously, any win or getting to judge there is huge. Um, she had a Westie that was best in show there in 1960, shown by Cliff Hallmark. Uh, his name was Symmetra Snip, and he actually was the grandson of her very favorite Westie of all time, which was not Simon, by the way. It was a dog named Crubin Dexter. <laughs> um, and he won his, he won seven best in shows and sired a bunch of champions as well. Um, but she always said he was a far better dog than Simon. Simon was just a show dog. Um, he was obviously a good dog, but he wasn't um, as good as she would like. My favorite Montgomery memory is watching her judge best in show there. And I was a kid, but at the time, um, Rick Chudian was suspended for being a naughty boy. <laughs> which he to do. And his assistant, uh, Phillips, Philip Fitzpatrick, showed the Airedale Bravo True Grit and was best in show that day. And Fitz, I believe, was 11 at the time. And it was the only time I ever saw Rick cry, and he did cry. <laughs> um, but I can still vividly remember that day. I have a picture of my father and my sister and I sitting ringside with a Westie friend of ours. And um, literally, I can still see it happening now. So I don't know what if her favorite was winning it. It probably wasn't, because as competitive as she was, she would have rather have been showing the dog than having Cliff show yes. <laughs> She liked to win a lot. Um, as far as Morrison Essex, very much so. Where 
from the time I was three till about 11, we lived in Green Village, New Jersey, which is um, right near Madison, which is where Geralda Farms, Mrs. Dodge's original estate and where the show was held. Um, so I was there, I saw it. I saw the field where it originally was. Um, friends, one of my best friends, family rented a house on the property of the act where the actual dog show was held. So um, to see that history and my, not really my uncle, but um, Henry Sayers, my mother's first husband's nephew, <laughs> was the head of the animal shelter at Geralda Farms, Mrs. Dodge's um, property. So we were there. It was just a normal part of my life to see that and experience it. So um, she did place in the group there in 1953, I believe, with, De with the dog Dexter that I was just talking about. That was her favorite. I I would say that was probably, yeah. Um, that's probably a pretty good memory for her, I would say. <laughs> Cause she been, oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, sorry, she would have been, let's see, 1953. She would have been in her 20s, so pretty young to... Yeah, that'd be exciting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we used to see, like, I would see pictures of her showing up here quite a bit. And you oh, yeah. We, I mean, they, she went to Canada a lot, but I remember every summer as a kid, um, I liked when we'd go to cars because there was always a carna the carnival going on and yeah. stuff to do. And, um, yeah, I have memories of... Um, I'm not going to tell the story on myself, but if you want a good story, you can ask Jim Reynolds about me and my mother competing in Canada. Uh-oh, I will. <laughs> I might, I'll tell. I might have. Um, I won the first day. We had two Westie puppies, and Tommy Gannon was the judge the next day, and my mother won, and I might have stuck my tongue out at the judge. <laughs> 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 and Jim tells it in a far more entertaining manner than I do. He was probably <laughs> sitting at ringside watching, wasn't he? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Because <laughs> he had surely <laughs> always a ringside there. So. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what do you think um, your mom would think of today's Westies? Um, <laughs> there are some that she would like very well. I think she would be disappointed in some dogs that have done some big winning that are huge or, I mean, significantly larger than they should be. They're supposed to be 11 inches tall, <laughs> not 13. Uh, the trimming, the, the fakeness of them, I mean, she understands, you know, obviously you want them to be pretty, but when you can't see whether they have eyes or ears because it's just ensconced in hair and hairspray, she would not be happy. On that note, I remember when I, because I, you both, you both are very influential with me with beagles. And I remember the first dog I, I would really push was a dog from District Gear. And your mother judged him somewhere. And I think she put him up, but she gave me such heck for the way I trimmed his tail. <laughs> Stop trimming the damn tail. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah, I love when you judge them and their, you know, tail is, you know, it's, three inches around and hairspray to death. And I'm like, come on, it's a beagle for God's sake. <laughs> Some of them just can't help themselves. They just you can make them pretty, but. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think she would think of the beagles then? Um, she'd probably be happier with them, I think. Um, just. Well, she had a lot to do with, with a, a, a certain litter that did very well, so. Yes. For yeah. sure. And that is, that breeding um, was very successful and has continued through the generations. It was two beautiful pedigrees put together that just worked. Yeah. And yeah. they produced, you know, since then very well. Um, she just loved beagles. Like literally she would be happy. She could dislike the people. She could not even necessarily, she wouldn't even admit that she didn't like the dog. If a beagle won something big, she was the happiest person alive. <laughs> she just, she really loved them so very much. She was, and she was always very supportive, whichever dog I was showing. Was oh, and if she loved you, she, 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 there was just her people. And she would, 
always was happy to see them succeed and do well. And, you know, that's, that's missing a lot. I think that there's, it's all about the individual now, instead of being happy that your breed won something. None of the breed people stick around and watch from the group anymore. They they weren't the winner, you know? And that's, I have to say, and it's a new experience for me, terrier people as diehard and killer as they are in the ring at the end of the day, for the most part, at least growing up, growing up with the people I, you know, around Peter, Bobby Fisher, Kokomar, yeah, they would all kill each other in the ring. But when it was d- said and done, they would all help each other. Um, I, I can name times when they would trim each other's dogs. You know, like Peter traveled a lot. There was times when Bobby Fisher would, you know, work on a dog for him because Peter was, you know, in England for a couple weeks or um and they would all go to dinner at the end of the day and those are the experiences that i had that you know afforded me to be you know just surrounded by greatness and great people so um and they were like i said they supported each other y'all want to win but yeah they didn't agree they want to beat them but dogs come and go the people most of them have been around a long time and if you're good to them they'll be good to you were, were there any dogs that your mom either owned or bred or even just like purchased that were really great dogs that we didn't really get to know? Um, most of the terriers obviously came before me. Um, she had a carry blue that I think he did a significant amount of winning, but it's also so different what yeah what people thought of as what people think of now as significant winning and what it was then i mean i think simon won a total of 26 best in shows which is was a million back then today it'd be like oh he'd be like number 10. I'm trying to think. I got like the, even the carry. I I had never pictured your mom with a carry. So yeah, like, here are um, the things. Well, other and had multiples of them. Um, and actually, the last dog, the dog I'm talking about, is one that, um, his name was Melby's Feeling Groovy, and um, he wound up. He was our house dog for a while, but he was Eddie and Leslie Boy's house dog. Um, Eddie had shown him and we always kind of joked that he taught, I learned how to walk holding on to him and then Eddie and Leslie's kids the same way. He was just a cool dog. And I know he won a lot. I have no idea what the, <laughs> yeah. um, I recognize the name besides the yeah. Melody prefix. I recognize it. Right. Like so. Um, uh, there's pictures of him on Facebook and stuff. Occasionally Eddie and Leslie's kids. And I like to find torturous pictures of Leslie with a, really bad haircut and <laughs> them on there. Um, you know, we owned or were gifted or fortunate to have some beagles that were not necessarily big winners, but they really contributed to breeding programs. And I think that's vitally important. Um, that's important. Yes, important. A bitch that she won the variety at the garden before we owned her um and actually ed jenner gave her to me with Huey eastern um and she was beautiful she just didn't like to show i think who was she, she what was her name Huey eastern i pet bred her but um ed jenner owned her and luke showed luke Ballou showed her in um she went opposite at the national under mike billings in cleveland whatever 1988 maybe <laughs> um i think she won the variety at the garden under maybe jackie hungerland she was beautiful she didn't love to show but she is probably in some of the best pedigrees the red and white bitch yes mm-hmm. yeah okay i remember yeah. um a bitch that Wade and John originally gave me to show in junior. When my first beagle that I showed in junior came in season, and we were going to breed her. My mom called Wade and John and were like, do you have something that she can show in juniors? And they sent me an eight month old bitch that they'd finished. They didn't really have any plans for best day of my life, but who knew this little scared 
beautiful bitch came off the plane and that was Lambert Love Notes, who is <laughs> in just about eh, a huge amount of great pedigrees. It's pretty far back now, but um, she produced, I believe herself, 20-ish champions. Um, she did a bit of winning herself as well. Yeah, she, she only ever won one group, but she was shown by 14-year-old me and competed in hound groups with every, you know, that was Afghan wars in the Northeast at that point were pretty deadly. It was, you know, a lot of, she won one group under Joe Gregory. I'll never forget it. It was the very first group I ever won. Wow. And Richard Bauer was second in the group with the Greyhound of Dr. Elsie's. And Michael Canaliza was fourth with Triumph of Grandeur. <laughs> I have no idea what went third, but I, and I remember Richard looked at me and he said, don't ever forget how you feel right this minute. And I've told a lot of people that same thing when they have their first big win, because, you know, it was probably a, if a 50 dog hound group, uh, some dog show on Cape Cod, but the fact is the dogs that were in there, it was an incredible group. She won, um, she had a lot of claim to fame. She, when she was a puppy, she won the Houston special. Her father was Dickens, who was a big winning 13 inch beagle at that time. And um, in Houston, I'd gone down for the specialty in the summer and she won the variety under Tony Musladen, who was kind of the, God of Beagles and Dickens was opposite. And then oh, that's a big win. It was. <laughs> and I did not, I went opposite the next day to him. And then I won the next two varieties under somebody who had given Dickens a best in show not that long before. So yeah, she had, she was great at winning. She won a lot of specialties. Um, yeah, she's. Beagles were so different then. They didn't win like they do now. They also didn't show that the way they show now. The first one I ever had that was a great show dog, and I barely got to show him, was uh, High Fidelity. Oh, I loved High Fi. Yeah. High Fi was the best. Yeah. Uh, he was the coolest beagle ever. I could, you know, I've never been a big beagle house dog person. None of the ones we ever had were very good house dogs. High Fi was the coolest dog ever was, um, I the last time i got to show him was in the veterans class at aldi the year you won under heck rice and he was second in the and it was a beautiful veterans class and he was second and i was crying and somebody said what i can't believe you're crying that was a beautiful class i'm like i'm crying because i know it's the last time i ever get to show him and he's going back to fred backstrom and you know <laughs> I loved him. Yeah, he was, we, he was he was such a beautiful dog and such a fun dog to show. Oh my God. You and him would have been like <laughs> incredible. Uh, no, I, I remember watching him. I think I saw him with John, I think. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, John Raleigh showed him. Um, he had, you know, he was primarily shown in Canada. He just, uh, he was a cool, cool dog. He sure was. So what, what, ad, what advice has, do you remember that your mother gave you over the years about your career in dogs or your direction in dogs? Um, I just always think back to, I don't know that she ever gave me specific advice. I just know how lucky I was to be born into the family I was born into. Yeah, for sure. um, the fact that as a kid, and I'm 100% certain I probably whined and cried and was a brat about it, um, getting drugged to dinners and sitting there for hours and I wouldn't trade that for the world now because the things I learned some of the stories I know which I kind of wish I didn't know some of them <laughs> we won't go into those ones <laughs> exactly we'll save those for another time <laughs> being surrounded by people again like Peter Bobby Fisher Cliff and Lois Hallmark we traveled in England and Ireland a lot. Uh, my father was from Ireland. Uh, just being exposed to those people is what kind of shaped me as far as who I am and who I became. And when I, I remember I went to a dog show and I was showing the last Westie we had. 
uh, which was a dog that she gave best of breed to on Montgomery weekend from the classes. And then uh, we wound up getting him about a year later. And it was never really in the plan that I was going to show him, but other things fell through and here we go, Patty. <laughs> I've had it. Um, and I was, I'd gone to a dog show and I was driving home and I called her and said something about like, yeah, I think maybe I want to judge. And I had never wanted to. I judged my first sweepstakes when I was 18. And I thought, I don't want to do this. I like to show dogs. I don't, you know, this is not fun. It was a Cary Blue sweepstakes at Trenton Kennel Club. And that was back in the day when Terry Stacy kind of ran the judges department at the AKC. And I remember Terry said, uh, he, we'll give you the whole terrier group now. And I was 18. And I'm like, what are you, are you out of your mind? Like, nah. <laughs> I kind of regret that decision now. <laughs> but, you know, when you're 18, you don't think, you think you know better than everybody. That was not the case. Um, again, just being exposed to the life I was exposed to, the people, the dinners, the people that were regulars at your house, I mean, Eddie and Leslie boys probably, I would say, were one of the biggest influences from whenever they would come east, they would stay with us. Um, like education all the time. Education all the time without even really knowing that it was education. Uh, and it's funny when people will ask me now that I have the Griffons, um, people are like, where did that come from? And actually it came from Leslie when she was showing Wall and Charlie Brown. I was probably six years old. But I love that dog. I thought it was so cool because it was different. It was something besides a Westie. And trust me, I love Westies now, but I didn't love them for a long time. I would beg for anything but. Just sometimes they can't be a lot of fun showing, that's all. <laughs> they, they, yeah, they're usually the ones that are great show dogs aren't very good Westies. <laughs> the ones that are really good are um, they're like, eh, I don't need to. I'm better than that. So. Um, Again, I'm just lucky, just lucky. And I appreciate it and appreciate the people that have been supportive of me. And, um, you know, when you contacted me about doing this, um, it's funny, I was going through some things last night to try to give myself a little refresher on some of the questions I thought might happen. And I was reading um, a thing that Bill McFadden wrote when mom passed away and, uh, just talking about how she never, she was in his mind, and I hear this a lot, was probably one of the best terrier judges that there's been, but it just never occurred to her to be anything but who she was. And she didn't, there was no fakeness. There was, if you asked her, she was gonna tell you whether you wanted to hear it or not. And even if you he told didn't me. Ask, she would tell you. <laughs> and I think I probably inherited that gene from her a little bit. <laughs> A lot of it, actually. Um, but you know what? That's okay. It's unfortunately today's society you know, wants instant gratification, don't want to put in the hard work, and they want you to tell them it's perfect. That's not how I was raised, and I don't think anyone gets any better for that. So, yeah, you're not learning anything from that. So. Nope. <laughs> yeah, do you have anything you want to say to, to close this out for us? You, you've already told us a million things, and I'm, I'm so thankful for all of it. So. Um, I don't know. Again, just, I love our sport. I hope we can get back to some kind of normal, whatever that may look yeah. like. The new normal? <laughs> yeah, I... I think mom would have dealt with this. Um, not well. And actually, I've thought about that numerous, numerous times of as much as I would still love my mother to be alive in a lot of respects. I'm glad she's not having to deal with this because the stress and she lived even when she was older and unable to go to shows as much as she would have liked. Um, she lived for results. She lived to hear what happened at the dog show. She wanted, you know, and you <laughs> could ask, uh, I mean, when, um, if dog news was not at her house on Monday, she was not a happy girl. <laughs> She wanted that. She, uh, and living in Connecticut, you know, when it was mailed from New York on Friday, oftentimes it was there on Monday and she would call 
say, did you get your dog news? No, mom, I don't live like <laughs> in the same area. So it takes a little bit. The mail's not that fast. Um, so no, I'm actually in, in reality, it's good that she's not having to deal with it. I wouldn't really wish it on anybody. The so much unknown and yeah, for sure. I think, um, the fear mongering and yeah, you just have to try to live in a positive state and take care of yourselves and take care of, you know, what you can and what you can control and I agree. hopefully we'll all figure it out and get back to doing what we love to do. Well, well, thanks, Patty. I just want you to know your mom had a huge impact on me. And you did, too, if you remember when we first started with the red and white. So. I do. Jerry Beagle. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is it? It is, it's amazing when you look back and the last night when I was going through stuff and reading and the people that she contributed to as far as getting started in dogs and the people that are still around and they'll be like, oh, you know, our first dog show was Westminster 1962. We saw Simon, we, you know, um, or what people, Westie people that got their start from her or had dogs from her. It's just really neat to see all these generations later and that it's still appreciated. Yeah. If we all had a pedigree, you'd, you'd probably see Barbara right there at the beginning of the <laughs> I really appreciate what you've done for us here tonight. Oh, you're very welcome. It's good to see you. You look fabulous. Thank you look you. happy. Good to see you too. I am happy. I love it up here. It's beautiful. Got a great little house, little yard for my dogs. It's all good. <laughs> <laughs> and your favorite Canadian college. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, you, David. Uh, we can't be mean. It's their anniversary. <laughs> I don't hear that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I will. Take care. You take care. <laughs> Thank you, Patty, for giving us your time and for giving us so much information about your mother. It was a fabulous interview. I really appreciate it. Hope you guys all enjoyed it. If you like what you're seeing here, make sure you press the like, share, and subscribe button and that notification bell as well. And if you want to get a hold of me and give me, give me some ideas or tips, go to dogshowtips at gmail.com. If you want to find out what's happening in Will's world, go to willalexander.net. Until next time, guys, talk to you soon.